Because you play games with space and time and relativity, other things change as well. Momentum is different, velocity is different, and most importantly, energy is different. Let's take a look at my watch right here. And if we take a look at my watch in the dark, you can see that it glows. But the glow of the watch doesn't come from light that's been absorbed. The glow of this watch comes from the decay of a radioactive isotope called tritium. It's an isotope of hydrogen. Now when it decays, it emits what we call a beta particle. And we'll look at that in chapter 30. But the crucial thing is this. The beta particle stays inside the watch. So if I use a Geiger counter to take a look at the watch, there is no external radioactivity. This watch is a sealed system. Nothing gets out. So there's a radioactive decay which happens inside. It releases energy, but nothing escapes the watch. Now, think about this. As time goes on, the watch is losing energy because the dial is glowing. It's giving off energy. The tritium is decaying. It's giving off energy. The watch is losing energy as time goes on, but it is not losing any particles. But as time goes on, what happens to the mass of the watch? We'll give you some choices. In fact, as time goes on, because the watch is losing energy, it also loses mass. In principle, I'd be able to measure a difference in mass of the watch with time. And it's because it's giving off energy. And as we'll see in chapter 27, the most profound consequence of special relativity is the equivalence between matter and energy. And the equivalence between matter and energy is given as the most famous equation in the world, E equals mc squared, something you've certainly seen before. And so you can convert mass to energy. You can convert energy to mass. They're freely interconvertible. And that has tremendous practical applications in nuclear energy because you actually convert measurable amounts of mass to energy with the release of tremendous amounts of energy in a nuclear power plant or in a nuclear explosion. And that equivalence between matter and energy is perhaps the most profound application of special relativity with the most practical applications. But there's other practical applications of special relativity as well, which we'll see in chapter 27. And chapter 27 is abstract and odd, but it gets even more abstract and more odd when we turn to chapter 28, quantum mechanics.